the Disco Lady. Hey everybody, and welcome to another Sunday night. It's around 8 o'clock, and that means it's time right. for Disco Lady Ada. And we're also going to be doing a great search as I uh, teach people around the world my tips and tricks for searching for electronic components. Not an easy skill, but you can pick it up. I'm going to do another one today. This time we're going to get flexible with FPC connectors. Very common, very confusing thing to search for. I know, Phil, on a daily basis, you're always asking me, how can I find a matching FPC connector? I am. It's true. Um, special thanks to everyone who's been with us and supporting us through this pandemic that ain't going away. So nope. we um, just need to make the best of it because all we have is each other, literally. Um, we're shipping, uh, we're fully staffed, so please place orders on our website. The only way that we can survive and make it through these tough times is for people to place orders, and you do that at adafruit.com. So. Good news, though. You get cool electronics to play with at home safely right. with you and your roommates or family. Okay, so um, let's kick it off. What do you want to okay. Uh, show? Okay, so let's go to the overhead. I'm going to show off some FPC connectors. Okay, this is my calipers. So, um, what does FCP stand for? I'm glad you asked. It stands for Flexible Printed Circuit. Uh, and it's also sometimes known as FFC. And uh, it's like flexible something circuit. Freaking circuit? I don't know. Um, but this is a really common uh, type of material. You, like, you see this. It often looks like this kind of a golden color. That's the copper. And it's uh, made on a polyamide film. So it's flexible, and that is really nice because you can like manipulate it and move it uh, a couple thousand times. It doesn't break or crack very easily. Um, although this is often, you know, was originally designed, I think, for uh, very small electronics, um, you'll just see it in about everything these days. So, for example, here I've got a connector for a Raspberry Pi camera, also has an FFC. Uh, we get it in fashionable Adafruit Black, but it's still that flexible component and it has a printed circuit on it, although it's tougher to see. In this case, of course, on this on this board, it's much easier to see. You can actually see little traces. I got another example here. This is another display. These are common in displays. That's where you see them the most. Um, here's an e-ink display. And the reason you know people like them is you can you know fold it over uh, and it's flexible and if it, it gets it moved and, and jiggled, it doesn't crack. So the challenge is, is that um, often you buy the displays and they come like this, uh, or you know, a, a camera. It'll come like this with a connector on it, but you often don't get the matching connector from the same location. And like we were chatting last week about uh, rectangular connectors, similarly, uh, sometimes the data sheet will have a part number for you, but rarely. Usually they'll just give you the pitch and the number of pins, and they just say, hey, find some matching connector, and you're on your own. And that's where DigiKey comes in. DigiKey's gonna to supply to you the matching connector. Amazing. So, do you have any questions yet, or? No. Okay, cool. All right, so the first thing we want to do is, um, like last week, we wanna figure out the pitch and the number of contacts. This is just, you know, whenever you start getting a connector going, that's what you want to do. You want to say, what's the pitch and what's the number of connectors? Oh, do you have a not question? A, not a question, more of a comment. comment. Um, from the chat. Mm -hmm. The higher the resolution of the display, the more obscure and hard to source the FPC connector becomes, even if the display data sheet has a part number. True, true. Yeah, sometimes they'll put a part number and you're like, you can't get that, you know, because they they tend to be selling to, you know, a cell phone maker that's going to buy hundreds and hundreds of thousands. So it's like they'll contact that company directly. Um, we might eventually get to um, going looking at uh, very fine pitch FPCs, like 0.3. But for today, I'm going to go with like the very common 0.5 or uh, one millimeter pitch. So this uh, connector... It's actually kind of handy if you can see here, it actually says 40. It tells you which pin one and pin 40 is. That's pretty cool. Sometimes you don't get to know in which case, or you know, that they're not labeled like, uh, I think this one's labeled kind of nice, but this one is not, for example. So the, the e-ink display does not have a label, in which case, uh, you know, you'll do your handy thing. You'll get your calipers. You'll measure uh, as close as you can from, you know, one pin to the other, and then she'll get um, 
from middle last to middle first pin is 11.5. And then remember that um, you have to subtract one, you know, you're, you have whatever number of contacts minus one. Uh, so in this case, pull up our handy in the calculator, 11.5 millimeters divided by uh, 22 contacts. Or is it 23? It must be, sorry, because you subtract one is 0.5. So you'll see most FPCs, if they're very fine pitch, like you'll see they're, they're kind of doubled up. It's 0.3 millimeter. Uh, most, you know, fine pitch connectors, if they sort of look like this, you'll see it's like, oh, you can count them, but they're very close together. They're 0.5. And then um, you'll see for larger connectors, um, like this one, one millimeter. Those are really the most common. Unlike, um, Rectangular connectors, which can be imperial or metric, um, FPCs are almost always metric. Do you have no comment or question? Yeah, a couple things. Um, this is answered in the chat, but you can also reiterate. Yeah. Um, how's the solder on the on the circuit on it without melting the plastic? Ch and, challengingly, but you can. Yeah, and, and in the chat, you know, they mentioned there's Kapton um, style materials, and it's heat resistant. Yeah, the the connector itself is made out of a heat resistant. Um, laminate so you you know this will not melt this will not melt when you solder to it um, the connector itself uh, it's not like in a melt but you do have to be fairly fast you can't uh, really heat the heck out of it um, because some of the plastic will melt yeah next up I often hear MIPI in conjunction with FPC cables so what's that for mm. MIPI is the protocol that goes over the FPC FPC just means the flexible connector that's the mechanical description um, it's a flexible printed circuit. That's all it means. It can, in this case, I happen to have displays because I like displays, but I also got this camera connector. And the, this cable is also used on the Raspberry Pi for, uh, like somebody mentioned, MIPI. There's a, I don't have a Raspberry Pi handy that I can grab. It's like the one time I don't have a Raspberry Pi on my desk ready to grab. But there's a display connector and that connector um, has, it, it contains a DSI port, which is MIPI. Um, and MIPI is um, a differential, uh, small number of pin serial protocol for communicating with displays. Um, in this case, this display, you can see it has a large number of connectors and you can also see that it has like, see there's like this chunk of eight, three times eight pins. That's because it's an RGB 888 display. It has eight bits red, eight bits green, eight bits blue and parallel. So it's not a, a MIPI display. Um, but they do make displays like this in MIPI. In fact, the larger displays will only be MIPI. That um, chip manufacturers are are slowly getting rid of uh, TFT RGB displays, and they're going um, to MIPI. In the chat, it says MPA, uh, MIPI display is display serial interface, and CSI is camera serial interface. Yeah, very similar. And on the Raspberry Pi, they use the same connector again. It is flex uh, connector. Uh, also, yeah. uh, shout, out, uh, shout out to our Pavlik One who has some great info in the chat tonight. The connectors are usually not standard, but the Raspberry Pi has somewhat standardized connectors it contains just because of the sheer numbers of connectors they ship on their boards. Yeah, that's right. It's just, it's, they picked those, uh, you know, they they picked an FPC connector because they want it. You know, I think they realize like you'll want to have the, the camera come out and maybe bend around. Um, they picked a point. Uh, sorry, a 1.0 millimeter pitch, probably because it made the cable nice and large, so you know young kids could plug it in safely. Um, I've also seen this pitch connector on touchscreens. It's not super common though. I, 0.5 millimeter is like almost universal. 0.5, and then for very high pitch um, devices, 0.3. Okay, so now we know um, the pitch of the connector. So let's start looking on DigiKey to get that matching connector. All right, here we go. Okay, so um, let's do the 40 pin connector to start. And so um, what I like to do is I always like to, you know, uh, type in the generic name of the component that I'm looking to search for. So in this case, I type in FPC connector. Now remember last time we were looking for a rectangular connector, we searched for a rectangular connector. And um, you'll see FPC, there's a couple different things. There's housings, there's jumpers. Um, one cool thing is is you can actually buy pre-made cables that are like jumper cables. So if you have two FPC connectors, and you'll see um, this one, for example, if you look, there's it's doubled. There's like two contacts 
per like it is forward and back there's like it's doubled up alternating so this is the ultra high pitch this is the 0.3 millimeter pitch this is what a 0.5 millimeter pitch looks like and this is what a 1.0 millimeter pitch looks like again there's really only three pitches you're not going to see i mean you might but it's very very rare you're only really going to see um those so it's cool you know if you need like a custom uh flex connector you can get that here but that's not what we're looking for uh, i like to look at the images to make sure i'm in the right category let's pick the first category here which is called flex i guess the f and ffc is flat flexible i guess it's kind of like redundant i like fpc flat flexible printed circuit because it's like flat it's always flat anyways um so looking here, these are the connectors, and you're like, yeah, that's kind of what I want. I want something that this will slip into. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have to pick the number of contacts and um, the pitch, and you'll see there's a, there's a lot of options. 20,000 different FPC connectors. Not surprising, because there are so many different configurations, number of pins, like upright, downright, whatever, packaging. So um, our job is to whittle that down from 20,000 which is a scary number, down to like half a dozen, which is a nice number. So um, first up, I always like to only search for active parts. So that'll get rid of a whole bunch. We're now down to 13,000. Um, next up, I'm going to look at, um, oh, and you see, I, there, you know, you want to ex expand to see all the options. There's a lot of options. It's a very powerful search. So um, I want to look at the pitch, because remember, it's like I know what the pitch is, and that's a fixed thing, so you might as well select that now. And I know it's 0.5 millimeter, so I'm going to apply the filters, and then that also cut the number down in half. So now I'm down to about 5,000. Um, next, the number of positions, right? How many pins? These are, these are the easy things that will really cut down the number of choices, um, with it before you have to start selecting for other stuff. Yeah. Okay, one note. So, uh, our public one used to work at a company that designed and built VRHMDs, had, uh, had modern displays. Mm. So, that's why this person is pre pretty familiar with it. Wow, this is, this is like a show that you know all about. You, yeah. know, you know what's coming next. And that's then cool. also, shout out to uh, JMK, who's back. Hey, welcome back, JMK. It's and good then, to hear from you. Yeah, and then um, question when you get to it. Yeah. Are the connectors different for contact side up or down? Ooh, we're going to get to that. Okay, don't, we're going to get to it. Don't spoil it. No, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, okay, so let's, let's do the contacts. So we know the number of positions, we know the pitch, so let's do that. Uh, for this connector, 40. And you'll see that really reduces it because there's, there's so many options. You can go up to 96 uh, positions. And so that's why, um, you know, that's the number of pins. That's why picking that early will really cut down on... Um, the options. Okay, next up, it's like how do you want the mounting type to be? Um, actually, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start looking at the images. I want to make sure that I'm still on the right track. Okay, I'm on the right track. And then, um, yeah, let's now chat about top or bottom contacts because there's a couple options here. There's bottom, top, Top and bottom, and then there's vertical. Now, we're not going to go for a vertical connector. Vertical connection is, is sticking right up. Um, but let's go back to the overhead so we can chat about top and bottom contacts. So, um, FPCs are almost always single-sided. You see the gold contacts here. Um, not here. There's a little protector here. There's, this is like a, a dark um, a stiffener, so it protects the contacts. Um, likewise, you see here, there's a, a stiffener on the back and the contacts here. And on this one as well, you see there's contacts and then there's a stiffener. But you'll notice that these have the contacts on the different sides. So when you fold over the display, this one has the contacts on the top. And this one has the contacts on the bottom. So that's going to make a difference. And believe me, it's like everyone's made the mistake you get the wrong one. Very common to, to order and you're like, oh, I just need to get the pitch. And you get the pitch and then you realize, oh, shoot, it's because it's folded over. I didn't think of the way it is. So what you want to do is you want to visualize it when it's on the PCB by the contacts facing down or up. And that'll matter on whether the, the contacts are on the 
the connectors on the off side of the PCB, or it might be on the same side. Like this might, might be folded over and here's like a PCB, for example. It might be like this, where if, it's, if you have it the TFT this way, then the contacts are top because the connector here would have to connect to these top um, contacts. Or if the FPC is folded under, which is very common um, in this case, you want the contacts to be on the bottom. So there's no guarantee of which way you want. You have to think about your display or your connector and think about how it's going to fold. Is it going to fold under the PCB or is it going to be on top of the PCB and then you know you have some foam or standoffs to keep it from uh, getting crushed. So in this case I'm going to have this um, fold over the PCB and then um, the contacts are going to be top contacts right angle. So let's go back to the computer. Okay so we decided we're going to have top contacts. Like you might be wondering why not just get top and bottom contact. You can. Um, you're going to pay a little bit more. Uh, they're more expensive because they have like, you know, a, a, a double contact. Um, I tend to really just get one or the other. I don't usually get top and bottom because usually you've picked your display and there's only contacts on the top or on the bottom and like you're going to save a couple bucks if you just like decide which way it is. So in this case, contacts on top. And you'll see that that actually cuts down like a lot, like 90% are um, selected. Um, and then there are a couple options for the locking feature. And I can show the locking feature on the overhead because I have actually two, two of the types. Okay, so um, this is an FPC connector. And in this case, you have to open it up by pulling out these ears. You can see that if you push it in, it locks, and if you pull it out, it makes a little slot. So this is a top contact with um, slide lock is what this is called. You slide it out. There's another kind, which is very popular, and this is a flip lock. So this one, um, the FPC goes in and you flip it down. In general, Almost all FPCs that are top contact will be slide, and almost all FPC connectors that are for bottom contact will be flip top. The reason is, is you can flip top because the contacts are on the bottom and you can just push them down, whereas if the contacts are on the top, you have to kind of like slide them up into the connector. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, computer. Um, I'm also going to select now that I want uh, tape and reel because I'm going to buy a lot of these. So that reduces by half. And then I want slide lock. Okay, cool. Um, so there's a couple of other options like the actuator material and the contact finish. Um, you know, you can pick gold or tin depending on the voltage rating. Usually it doesn't matter for these kind of connectors. They're usually low voltage or operating temperature. So those don't really matter to me. I'm going to uh, pick only ones that are in stock. And what's nice is that, you know, this is really cut it down. There's really only a couple options here. Um, there's one by TE and uh, there's one by Amphenol. And you can look at the two options. Um, you know, they have slightly different materials, slightly different voltages. In the end, I actually ended up getting this Amphenol part. Um, you know, I've always, I've liked Amphenol connectors. They've been reliable. Um, a, a connector that's unreliable or that uh, is, gets brittle from um, uh, reflow soldering, it, it's been a problem that I've had. Some of, some of these connectors, they're, they're really minimal because they're only, they're meant for mass manufacture. And um, I find that I want a slightly higher quality one. Um, so it survives multiple insertions and people opening them and maybe like not being as careful as uh, possible. So um, now I'll show you um, the connector on the overhead. So this is uh, that uh, connector. You can see here you got that nice uh, dark slide lock. And then um, this is the FPC. 
and uh, it slides in. So it's got a little bit of a, of a trick. You have to slide it in until you see no gold. And then uh, with two fingernails or two pliers, you push the ears in. And now the ears are in place. And now it's, uh, it's nicely, solidly collect connected. Although I, hold on, I actually pulled it a little bit too much. A big issue is you want to really make sure Yeah, you'll hear a snap. So you really want to get those ears closed and then um, this is nice and solid. Okay, there's a question? Yeah, are both types ZIF zero in injection force or is that another kind? Um, ZIF I think would only be considered... Um, okay, I lost it. So here's a, here's a trick if you're... Oh, cause let's go to the overhead and I'll, I'll show how to search for ZIF socket. I don't think either of these are a socket, but let's remove both locking feature and connector contact type so that we can um, look for ZIF sockets. So looks like there's a couple ZIF options. Let's see what those look like. I think only flip lock. No, these are considered ZIF. I mean, I in general, I think of flip lock as zero insertion force because um, you don't have to slide anything in, but there's not a lot of insertion force even with the slide lock. Okay, two questions. Uh, how many cycles do the FPC connectors have, uh, really have as far as like, you know, inserting? Yeah, inserting? yeah. And then um, let me know when you're ready for the next question. Okay, so let's actually look at the data sheet to see if they have... Um, let's see if they have cycle rating. I don't know that they do. There's a lot of information here. In general, I'll say that FPC connectors, they have a rate, they, they usually have a cycle rating of about like, I don't say more than 10 cycles. They're really, the, the FPC itself, the connector on the display, can do maybe like 20 to 50, um, you know, especially if it's a flip lock where you're not rubbing anything. But for the slide lock um, connectors, I really wouldn't open and close them more than like maybe 10, 15 times. Yeah, uh, in the chat. So rated like 10 or 50. Um, next up, here's a question. Does the glass filled plastic actually make a difference in something that's small? I see uh, the TE had no glass fiber but ethanol I think I think what you're gonna see is that's gonna affect the voltage rating um, because these pins are so close you need to have a good insulator they're also gonna affect the temperature range that they can be used at um, and they're gonna affect um, the brittleness after rework or um, reflow so the material itself I you know I'm not gonna guess which one is better because I don't I, I usually don't care um, for the kind of work that I'm doing, I'm not doing um, connector applications that have uh, wide temperature ranges, and like I'm not usually dealing with um, you know high vibration uh, situations. Um, so for those, I just go for it by the specs. I mean, there there were six options. Some of them are going to be higher temperature rated, higher voltage rated than others. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we right. we got our. I'm just waiting to see if there's more questions. That's it. People love this stuff. So we got our Amphenol connector. I'm ready to test out this prototype. Um, and that's how you can search for flat, flexible, or printed flexible circuits, connectors All right. on DigiKey. Thanks so much. <laughs> uh, this week we'll have a variety of shows, of course. Uh, if you want more engineering chat Wednesday, uh, ask an engineer. We also have show and tell. We have no Pedro show on Wednesday, 3D Hangouts. We also have JT show on Thursday. Uh, lots of stuff going on this week, so some of the show dates might get moved around. It doesn't matter. And then, of course, sometime around 8 o'clock on Sundays, we have Desk of Lady Ada. When this video is published on YouTube, you can always put in comments about what things you want to see in the green yeah. search. You can also let us know on Twitter or at Adafruit. And uh, have at it. All right. Have a great week, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.